Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Studio 78 Podcast. I am your host, Nishe from NisheSnow.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am really excited to have our next guest on for episode 126. She is going to be a recurring guest on the podcast this season, so we might as well just call LaKay a co-host. Welcome, Woo-hoo. LaKay. <laughs> Thank you, Nache. I'm super excited about this opportunity. Super excited. <laughs> So before I just have LaKay just do a quick introduction, know that if you want to learn more about LaKay, she is an original OG of the podcast and was on episode five entitled Achieving Success as a Single Mom and Gaining Clarity on Future Goals, which is a very popular episode. And then I also had her on for episode 116, where she talks about education for personal development, college, masterclasses, podcasts, and more. Also a very popular episode. So if you really, really, really want to get to know her, be sure to check out episode five and episode 116. Um, Also know today we are going to be talking about product uh, product product-based versus service-based business. So we each have chosen a side And we're going to be curious to know which side you're on. But before we get there, before we get there, LaKay, just tell tell the listeners a little bit about you. Wonderful. So I am LaKay Umba, and I am a photographer and an educator. And obviously, I'm team service-based, but I live in in Hampton Roads, Virginia, well, depending on what you want to call it. I live in Norfolk. It's called Hampton Roads. It's called Coastal VA. Basically, I'm near where something in the water is going to take place. (laughs) That's where people know me from. (laughs) So um, I've been an educator for a number of years. That's actually how, well, no, that's that's not how we met, but Nishay and I worked together briefly a long time ago when we were teaching and I just kind of stuck with it. (laughs) I love teaching photography and graphic design, and I'm currently teaching that now, Um, and I also have a portrait photography business. So there's that. Yes. Okay, so today, people, and, you know, of course, if you guys don't know who I am, just go to nashesnow.com slash about, and all the things will be right there. And of course, the show notes for this page will be at nashesnow.com slash 126. But you can learn about all about me and what I offer over there. And if you want to learn more about LaKay, her links will be over there too. But you can also go to LaKayUmba, M-B-A-H.com. Okay, so let's get into today's episode. Product versus service-based business. I want to say both of us have dabbled in both because you've done products, right, Lakay? Yeah. So when I was um, in school, I just finished getting my MFA um, at Norfolk State University. So I was studying to do art and I dabbled with trying to figure out if I was going to sell products. I got into doing stained glass. I did a little bit of fiber art and ultimately I decided no. Some products are not my jam for several reasons. I love products. So, I know, and I don't get it. But <laughs> so let, let me tell you why I love service-based businesses. Yeah. As a photographer, the thing that I pride myself on is getting to know my clients really well. So I have a very lengthy intake process. I get to know somebody. I want to know exactly what kind of photo shoot they envision. I get really into helping people achieve their dream photo shoot, um, for lack of a better word. And I also, with that, and I think teaching has a lot to do with this too, I really value education and the process of self-discovery. I am a um, self-help junkie. I read all the books. <laughs> so I really value that that journey, and I like sharing what I've known what I've come to know with other people. I share the Mm. books that I read. I share the knowledge that I've gained and I like helping people succeed. Um, And I also determined a long time ago, I don't know how I came up with this idea, but I would rather get paid for what I know rather than what I do or make. Even though 
I am directly getting paid for doing when I do photography. But the exciting part that I get is the coming up with the concepts and seeing people happy at the end. Mm. It's not necessarily me just selling cameras. You know, Mm. I can still be in the photography industry and be selling products that are photography based, but I'm not, that's not what uh, gets me excited. Okay. So tell me, why do you like products so much? Well, it's just so funny because, you know, if you guys have heard the podcast before, or me talking to LeKay before on the podcast, rather, you know, I feel like LeKay kind of came kicking and screaming when I asked her to come teach with me at the school (laughs) that we taught at. She's like, what are you talking about? Teaching? I don't know if I want to be up in front of a a classroom. And now look, she she continued to do it and I abandoned ship. (laughs) You know what? I think I felt that that sense of responsibility and not wanting to get it wrong. Yeah. But then uh, I got it wrong (laughs) several times. And I had some very challenging students and I Mm. came out still enjoying it afterwards. I think I'm still in touch with some of those guys too. So, so this is my thing. I have dabbled in all the things, product and service-based businesses. For those of you who know me or have listened to me through the years, I started out doing graphic and web design for people. I mean, that is the all service all the time. And I... Uh, this might be too much of a strong word, but for the web design, I hated it only because it just felt like a gift that kept on giving. Like I would create the website, but then they would come back for changes and come back for this. And then I was Mm -hmm. just like, Oh my goodness. I just want to give you the website, wash my hands of it and keep it moving. Right. I just was like, I love that kind of the exchange of goods and then you come back only if you want some more new goods. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was joy in the service. I, I do. I love teaching. I mean, I, I have a class on Skillshare, right? Even though that's online. So it's not a live class. <laughs> Continue. So I'm not saying I don't enjoy service at all. I still love creating websites. I just don't get paid for it now. I just do my own or for friends. Thank you kindly. (laughs) In graphic design, I still have a love for all those things, but I, I truly get joy making and selling products. There's something about somebody receiving something that I created and it's now sitting in their home or they're using it in their day-to-day lives. So if it's my digital planner that I've created and they're now using it on their iPad every day, brings me joy. Mm -hmm. If when I used to create laser cut light switch plates and people would send me a picture of the plate in their baby's nursery or something like that. There was like a joy that someone was using a product that I created. And I don't know, it was just a little bit more special to me than service. Even though I enjoy, I'm not saying I don't enjoy service. It's just, if I had to choose one, I would choose a product-based business. Even though I dabble in both right now. Okay, so here's my problem with with products, and this shows how different our mindset is. So when I was in school and I was determining what I was going to do with this art that I was making, both of our brains instantly go to business. We're like, how can we make this a business, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, so, I'm just saying, stained glass. <laughs> stained glass, right? <laughs> so I put out, I put forth a plan. I was going to make a certain number of stained glass pieces. I was going to promote it. And then I was going to get paid for it. And I was going to be amazing. I was going to be a millionaire (laughs) stained glass maker. Right. But then when I sat down to actually do the production of it, I do not like repetitive action. I don't like cutting things over and over again. The idea of having to fulfill an order because somebody's already paid me for it, but I have to do the same thing that I did last week. I can't, 
I can't do it. <laughs> but <laughs> isn't about. teaching kind of like that? Because if you're teaching the same class no, every semester, you're like repeating what you said the semester before. <laughs> Not at all, because there are so many different personalities. These students are so different. I can kind of categorize, you know, you have newbie photographers versus people who are really into it versus people who just buy a lot of equipment and don't really know what they're doing with it. But I like being able to encourage people. It's about the connection for me. Well, then how about for the stained glass? And so the running joke here, people, is I've just gotten into stained glass <laughs> and LeKay was making fun of me because I was already trying to figure out how I could sell it so then right. I can buy more glass. But... <laughs> A whole but, other business. I see what you're saying about the repetitive action, but, you know, you know, I've mentioned to you about there are some accounts where they're making something, maybe it's out of wood or whatever, but maybe every week they have new and fresh designs and they're like, okay, Monday I'm coming out with new designs and, you know, they're going to be posted on Monday and go. Right. So then it isn't that repetitive kind of action. I think that's just for people who prefer to have something that's a little bit more formulaic, which is fine, too. But there's there's different ways to do product. Now, that that did appeal to me when you broke it down that way. But what I was envisioning is, you know, how you were doing your switch plate covers, which were great. I still have mine. I love them. So (laughs) that was repetitive. It was repetitive, and then somebody wanted to have that same switch plate. They wanted to be able to come back to it the following year because maybe they have another child and they need another one. So Mm -hmm. it's also that responsibility of having that inventory available for whoever knows how long. I think I just have a problem with commitment. (laughs) (laughs) But no, it's true because let's say if somebody's a candle maker, right? They're pouring and making the same candle over and over again. So you do, most product-based businesses usually are making the same product over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gets into the pros and cons because maybe we can get into that a little bit too with service versus product is if you are doing that by hand yourself or are you kind of... um, uh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess like manufactured. Mm-hmm. So, you know, or having it manufactured or created or what have you by someone else. Like you have to think through that because with a product-based business, if you want to scale, you as one person can only make so many, right? Mm-hmm. Like I can maybe make, when I was doing light switch plates or even stained glass, right? There's going to be only so many I as one person would be able to make in any given month, which then would make it where at some point I'm going to cap out unless I figure out how to get it manufactured or unless I get more help and more hands to create Mm -hmm. more pieces, right? Versus service-based business. I feel like you still have that issue too, right? Because if you're like a coach and even as a photographer, right? As one person, you can only do so many shoots in any given month well as far as scalability is concerned products definitely win because if we're using this stained glass example which i don't mind at all (laughs) so you have already created the pattern so now all you have to do is teach other people how to recreate your pattern so you can continue to produce that um, on a larger scale because there's no additional creativity involved and you don't physically have to be there as long as somebody is replicating your pattern whereas for me I'm only getting paid for the shoots that I do so you know how many shoots can I do how many classes can I teach and that will pretty much I will reach a limit to what I can do so I think products you can definitely scale easier and faster but on the flip side of that in order to make 150 stained glass pieces you need to have the inventory available You need to buy all the glass and all of the lead and all the other stuff that goes with it so that you can produce it. So there's a lot more upfront cost involved in having that, that scalability. Yeah. And I feel like with both products 
and service-based businesses, time is always a factor too. And I don't know if one necessarily wins because you need, you know, if you're a photographer or a teacher, that's time. Even though mm-hmm. maybe products win. You know why? No, because if, win. Yeah, win. because if I can get it <laughs> manufactured, then that's not my time. But with service-based business, I mean, of course you could, if you have like a coaching business, you can hire out other coaches. Photography business, you could, if you want to, hire more photographers to help mm-hmm. and assist. But I still feel with like the service-based businesses, most of the time the person is the face of that business and more time has to go into doing the thing. Yes. Or, I'm, you know. I'm totally, I totally agree with that assessment. Mm. But I'm just saying you, you lose him right now. No, actually no. <laughs> because there is, when you have a service-based business, there is less upfront cost to get it rolling. So mm. all I, all I need okay. really is my camera and well, my knowledge, but I can't put a price on that. It's priceless. But really, all I need is a camera, and I can start a photography business right now. Anybody can start a photography business right now with their camera. So you have a couple hundred dollar investment. Whereas if you're going to start a stained glass business and tell somebody you're selling something, then you need to have what? Um, glass is expensive. Y'all don't know anything about stained glass. And and the funny thing is, neither one of us are stained glass producers. We we're all about stained glass today. <laughs> yeah, and for the record, people, this is we're recording this on the day that I completed my first stained glass piece. So I'm like stoked. <laughs> like, on the show, we got to put some pictures of our stained glass in, in the show notes or something. Oh yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Now I forgot now, my train of thought. Where was I? <laughs> now that's the. Maybe that's true for physical products. The, the startup costs can be high depending on what kind of physical product it is. Because it really just depends, right? But mm-hmm. not for digital products. Like, like I'm part of the planner community and then planner Facebook groups. And I'm trained in Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. So for me, the startup cost is low for creating digital products. And even somebody who isn't trained in Adobe with things like Canva out there, I've seen people kill the game in digital planners with just getting Canva. That's their startup costs. And they go on Instagram, they use Gumroad or something else in order to sell their planners. So I don't know. Maybe? It depends. I think you're cheating with the digital products. Okay, that's cheating. fair. But But actually, to be honest with you, I can produce all that i have the same training that i use for my own business and i have no desire to make (laughs) digital products it's a preference i i I really do think each one can be done for a low cost and you can really be mindful of your time but you just have to enjoy what you're doing but but what i will say for physical products is a little bit more tricky than service-based businesses because you have to not only make it, you have to get the materials, you have to figure out packaging, you have to Mm -hmm. figure out shipping. And then if your products really start to sell, you have to figure out how you're going to scale. And I've seen a lot of product-based businesses go sideways because they weren't ready once they took off you know, and then you see people complaining on Instagram and Facebook about waiting weeks for orders or their orders not coming in because they didn't have the right packaging or something not looking right because they're using cheap material. And so for product-based businesses, it can get a little tricky. (laughs) It's interesting that you're bringing up that customer service aspect because I was going to bring up customer service um, and difficult clients as being a con for service-based industry because Mm. I have had had a couple of nasty encounters with clients who weren't happy with my work that almost made me want to quit photography altogether. (laughs) And this is part of the reason why I don't do weddings anymore because the emotions are just too... Hi. So yes, I'm all about 
service, but don't hire me for your weddings. I'm not going to accept your contracts anymore. <laughs> it's too it's too much. It's too much emotion for me to handle. I like it when I like doing things that are of joy. So celebration, uh, celebration portraits. I think I just like, I, I do like portraits better than events. But anyway, so I was going to say that the cons of service base, you get to know people really well and they trust you and then you can let them down. And then it feels really heavy for me to not, to not get that. I love these pictures email as soon as I send the pictures over to somebody. If I don't get that reply, then my whole day is ruined. Mm, mm. I mean, but that's kind of the same for both. I remember when I was first selling, like one of my most popular and most stolen ideas, like I've seen it, like even replicated overseas, is (laughs) my feather. I I love that thing. Oh my God. That feather was like went viral and it was insane. But when I first started shipping it out, I didn't ship it out in the right container. And I remember there was a couple of times where people were like, it arrived broken. They're like, oh, the feather is broken. And I'm like, (gasps) but of course I immediately sent them a new one. And and that kind of comes with that customer service and that trial and error. Cause you want to make sure that people are happy, but you just never know. Right. And, And I, someone I remember got the feather and they were like, I don't like it. And I don't think it was worth the money. So I feel like for service and product-based business, it, anytime somebody is buying something, it's so subjective, right? What they see online and what they think they're getting, ugh, you, you just have to try to represent what they're purchasing the best way you can in your marketing and on your website and on your Instagram and kind of go with it and, and just make sure you have done your best to accurately represent what you're selling. But you know what though? A little bit of a difference is I feel like if I were to get rejected for my photography work, it is more of a personal reflection because I've met with the client, we talked about it, and then you didn't like it. Whereas when you had a, nobody knows the face of who made your feather. They Mm -hmm. just know I want my feather and my feather arrived broken. Somebody better fix it. As opposed (laughs) to, look, hey, they messed up my uh, whole photo. (laughs) They all hate it. That was like an emotional, that is very emotional. Mm-hmm. Well, weddings right. are just a whole other game, though. That's oh, an yeah. unfair comparison. <laughs> right. I mean, well, but even even family portraits or something. Now, I can reshoot, but by that time, either you don't like me or I don't like you anymore. <laughs> so who knows what your pictures are going to look like? I take that part out. <laughs> <laughs> She's totally leaving it in. Oh, I'm so leaving that in. (laughs) But I I get what you're saying. I mean, I get what you're saying. I think, but I still think it's emotional for for both sides. Like, I understand the emotion that comes with with service. But products, whenever I would get an email where someone wasn't completely happy, it kind of broke my heart just a little bit. Because it's something that you created with love. Like it's, it's not a, I'm not the face of it, right? They just know they bought a product, but I'm like, I, I created that. I sanded it. I oiled it. I packaged it with love. And then you're going to tell me you don't like it. It hurt. It hurts. But in, in both industries, you have to have thick skin. Right, but let's say you get to the point where you're producing 500 feathers a day. By that time, you have a team of customer service representatives who are going to ship out the next one. You don't have, you can't have that same personal connection by the time you scale up to having so many produced at a time, you know? Mm. I know, I get you, I get you. So I guess as we're winding down here, if somebody's listening to this, and let's say they don't have a business. So so if somebody already has a business or have, have had multiple businesses, they're already team product or team service. People don't know. Some you, people don't you think know, so? Like, Even if they've already... I, I have an example. There's a, a young lady who I... She's one of my um, photography clients, and she produces a journal, but she wanted to branch out to do things like mugs and different kind of collateral like t-shirts and all that stuff i'm not talking about you (laughs) sounds like i am young lady (laughs) well as soon as you said that i was like oh that's not me (laughs) 
<laughs> no longer oh, young. <laughs> you are. So she was like, well, I'm just going to go get a cricket and then maybe I can produce the mugs at home because she was having problems with her uh, manufacturing company and all that. And I had to ask her, I was like, can you see yourself fulfilling clients? Are you going to set aside time to um, make these cricket orders and and do all of that. Is that what you want to do with your time? Or do you want to continue to grow your audience? Because she also has like Facebook groups and that kind of stuff that she is liking a little bit more. And so she didn't know. So she automatically assumed in order to make more money, I need to sell products. If I'm going to make products, then I'm going to make them myself as opposed to hiring somebody else. And that and ultimately she decided she's not going to buy a cricket and the vinyl and learn how to do it, watch the YouTube videos for hours and hours to figure it out. So some people don't know. True. I feel like, okay, let me figure it out. Let me rephrase that. I think people who have the experience we have of doing both know maybe if they lean towards liking one more than the other, Mm -hmm. but what I was going to say is there are people who really don't know. And for those people, my question is what will we tell them? Because if they're trying to decide which one to start with, how to determine which one might be right for them. And, and, and sometimes it's easy depending on the industry and their idea. Like if they know they want to be a photographer or a designer, it's easy to lend their services. Oh, excuse me. Easy to create a service-based business, even though there are ways to create products out of them, Right. But maybe they start with the easiest route, which is service, see if they like it. And then if not, figure out how to use those skills to to develop products instead. I think they would determine what they would do for free. So mm. many mm. photographers start off taking pictures of their family and all that or of their kids because that's just something they really enjoy. And to flip that to the other side, I am not a crafter. I think you would be shocked to know that, Jay, but I'm not a crafter. So you're not going to see little cute little things hanging up around my house because I don't enjoy the process of crafting. I I think I do. I have lots of things put away. I buy all the things because it's pretty and I like pretty, but I think it's about the process. So if you stop and think, what would I do for free or what would I invest in without the, without the expectation of uh, getting money back? Then I think that will help you figure out if you're team product or team service, because you craft. I, right. But I think what's interesting for me, like the time is, is a factor with me because I have nights and weekends. So though I like products, I don't have the capacity to do small scale products, which is why the products that I do sell are on demand. Maybe some t-shirts here, some mugs there, going through websites that'll print it for me. But you're not going to really make any, you'll make a little bit, some change here and there, but not real money because they're taking a cut. There's all these fees and stuff involved. So for me, the ideal product, which even I'm still kind of like trying to figure it out, is one where it's a high dollar product. Ooh, where mm-hmm. like for let's just go back to the stained glass example <laughs> yes <what? laughs> you guys don't see it but I just kind of like rolled my eyes at her because I know what she's thinking but let's go back to the stained glass example stained glass is expensive like most stained glass products can range from like $80 to $500 depending on the complexity of the piece, the size of the piece, the type of glass that was used, all of that good stuff. For me, like loving products, if I could make a glass installation for anthropology or create glass pieces for hotels and get paid $500 to $1,000 a, a piece and have several pieces I work on a month, that would be amazing. And that's like a high-end product-based business. Until that happens, (laughs) for me, the easiest way and most efficient way based on my current situation 
is to actually do service. Like I just got like a little check from Skillshare, right? And I'm like, ooh, I need to hurry up and create another Skillshare class because Skillshare is actually paying me and I'm making money while I sleep, right? And that's kind of a service-based business. It's teaching, hint, hint, okay. I've told Lakay she needs to do a Skillshare class, but we're not gonna even talk about that. And I wanted to get into doing some speaking engagements and that's service-based where- You're, you're, You're very wrong on both of those accounts. Those are both products. You would consider those products? Those are both products. Maybe they're hybrid, but those are both products. Because when you get hired for a speaking engagement, they're telling you what you're going to speak about. They want to have heard you do it already. They want to know that you've proven that you can do it. This isn't mm-hmm. something that you are necessarily customizing for this for this place. Mm, interesting. And you would say Skillshare because I've packaged it up created mm-hmm. it and I've put it onto that platform is just a product, a course that I've yep. created. Yep. Yeah, I'm product all the way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of hybrid though, because I can take what I've taught in person and I can package it. But maybe that's why I've been resistant this whole time, all of these years, Nache. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because, mm. because I want to be able to engage it's about engagement and communication. And maybe I'm I'm fearful that I won't have that same level of engagement unless somebody's upset with it. <laughs> Somebody is mad at the course that I produced, then they'll tell me, but maybe I won't have that same engagement if they love it. Maybe we've just diagnosed it now. now I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> and it's funny, I was just Googling examples of service-based businesses too. Examples of pure service businesses include airlines, banks, computer service bureaus, law firms, plumbing repair companies, motion picture theaters, and management consulting firms. What an odd selection. (laughs) That is so random. Random. I was thinking hairstylist, lawyer, (laughs) (laughs) doctors, those kind of things. But airlines, movie theaters? Here's transport, food service, distribution, retail. These intangibles provide the primary revenue source for service businesses. Okay, you need to just come on, come on over to the product side. It's, it's good over here. I like it over here. It's fun over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just send me some more feathers and wood carvings, okay? Be- because of those stained glass pieces because I'm not making it anytime soon. <laughs> this this is the thing about service based business that I think is that as we wrap up here, this is like the crux for me. My my mom and dad actually have service based businesses, and service based businesses require you to be there to provide the service for them to make money through the years. They had to be working Mm -hmm. (laughs) every day. And yes, you can determine like how much you charge and you can increase your prices through the years. But regardless, most of the time, it takes you doing the service. And yes, you can build a team and that team can do it for you, for sure. But most people when they start out and sometimes even when they end their career, it's them doing it. So you feel limited by the perceived lack of time freedom, whereas I feel limited when you're talking about products by the perceived lack of variety. Mm. I'm fighting strongly against the lack of variety and having to produce something that somebody expects to look the way they saw it online. And if they order 10 of them, then I got to sit there and do 10 of them (laughs) before I can do anything else. Okay. So, yeah. But let me ask you this. Mm Mm-hmm. That is true. No, we're not talking about your fancy anthropology fantasy. We're not talking about that. (laughs) We're talking about just starting out, like you said, small scale. And that's, yeah. Okay. Now, I will say for the product-based businesses, for the most part, starting out just like with a service-based business, you are creating the product, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you are making it. So there is still that, that time commitment, but it's different. I can't explain it. I think, I'm just trying to think through it. It's maybe the difference 
to me, and it'd be interesting for you guys listening, if you guys comment on this post or comment under the social media post, if you're hearing this the week it comes out, but, and you can comment, of course, on the website at any time, or you can comment anywhere at any time, but, but I guess the difference is with a service-based business, both, okay, so for the service and the product-based business, both require time to do the thing or make the thing. But the service-based business, you have to deal with someone else. Whereas the product-based business, I just have to deal with myself until I sell the thing. And I like That's that. it. You you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Shane don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an extrovert. <laughs> right, right. But you need but extroverts wind down by spending. They have to rebuild that time themselves. <laughs> whereas Interesting. you like the interaction with the people and I like people I just because when I interview people like what would you consider the podcast a product absolutely (laughs) absolutely yeah okay um hmm. yeah yeah it's I think it's a process thing I think it's a process and I think I the honest truth you know we're having this debate this versus this versus that I think both of us appreciate a hybrid version of whatever we're doing I agree. I concur. <laughs> I but, concur. But we both started somewhere. I mean, you have made purses. What else? What, let's list all the things that you've made by hand that you enjoy doing. <laughs> let's see. I've done by hand. Yeah. I've done purses. I've done jewelry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've done laser cut home decor. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Other than that, no, you've done calligraphy. I don't know if you started selling. Oh that. no, I didn't start selling. Like, okay, now if you add stuff, I just haven't even tried to sell calligraphy, mm-hmm. punch needle, book binding, <laughs> watercolor, charcoal. <laughs> now stained glass. I got into wooden beads too. Wooden beaded Ooh. home decor. I actually have some rings. Did you make stuff. that behind you? Oh yeah, <gasps> yes. I, I would buy that right now. Am I gonna make one? No, I know how to, but I wouldn't make one. Cause that's like a little, that's like macrame meets wooden beads. I, I I'll put like a picture in the show notes of that too. And then these are they're not on right now. But they're like the the lights. I forgot they have like a name for them, but it kind of lights up and it sparkles and stuff. I love it. Wonderful. And you, and you had a physical journal that you sell. Oh, yeah. That too. <laughs> well, I didn't know if that counted because I didn't hand make. You said hand make. But it's, oh, I did. And please forgive me. But that was also a, a product that you've done. Now, let me tell you about the photography that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> I've done weddings, real estate. Babies, newborns, maternity, family, lifestyle, events. Oh, prom. Well, that's an event too, but I've done prom photography. (laughs) Have you done landscapes? I've I've not done landscapes because I, again, because where I'm, I'm always trying to figure out how to make money from something. I just feel like landscape photography is, unless I lived in Alaska or Mm. Colorado, somewhere that has like beautiful landscape at your fingertips i think that's easier to sell i mean no pictures also, of virginia it, I, beach it didn't have people for me it didn't have people involved so it would have been all about the product the end goal i mean however mm-hmm. you've listed all the photography ones but you literally went to school for art <laughs> so <laughs> let's name all the art stuff you've done okay we're naming all okay well i've done painting i've done fiber art I've done stained glass. I think that might be, I think that's it. But I have a, I have a little secret that I'm going to share with everyone. Oh, goodness. I sold one of the first pieces that I loved, that I put my heart and soul into, and I regret it. I regret <laughs> it. I want it back. I can't believe I spent so much time on something that I'll never see again. I don't like selling stuff that I make. <laughs> oh my goodness. But if you sell it for the right price, then it's worth no. it. No, it's not worth it. I want it back. I want it back right now. <laughs> yeah, my, you ain't going to do my, well with uh, products. <laughs> if my professors heard me say that, they would uh, come through this uh, screen or phone or whatever it is right now and grab me by the throat. I don't want to sell my stuff. 
But I'm sure someone is enjoying that product and they'll sell it for thousands of dollars years from now. Big deal. I want it back. <laughs> and ask me if I'm going to make another one. No, I'm not. <laughs> so that would be the answer. They would be like, well, just make another one. Like, I don't want to make another one. I want that one because, yeah. That's... Well, I mean, that's the thing too, is like when it comes to art, which is just a whole other physical product, right? Some people are going to be comfortable or not selling their original, but then that's when you get reproductions, maybe, depending on what type of art it is. But for stained glass, you can't reproduce that. We're going back to this stained glass again. I'm just going to put it out there right now that maybe in the future I might become a world-renowned stained glass person. <laughs> but, you know, and then I'm if that doesn't happen, one piece. please don't go back to this episode and be like, what happened, Nishai? What happened to that career you were talking about? Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. Okay, so to wrap it up, people, you can't go wrong with either one, honestly. It depends on what you want to do, what brings you joy, and if you're willing to do the work in order to make either one successful. I mean, I've to, seen... You have to yeah. love it no matter what you choose. Because when you start a business, you have to really love what you're doing. Not everything can be a hundred percent about money. It has to be something that you can see yourself doing for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I still say team product, but you know, (laughs) service all the way, (laughs) but let us know your thoughts. Please leave a comment on the slash 126 on the article Or like I said, if you see this post on social media, let us know what you think. Are you team product or are you team service? Service. (laughs) All right, guys. Appreciate you. Remember to check out LaKay at LaKayUmba.com. She is in the Virginia Beach area. So if you need photography done, no weddings. (laughs) Please. I can refer you to some wonderful people. Definitely check her out. She has clients that are Baltimore, D.C., all over the place, Richmond, everywhere. So definitely check out her website, lakeumba.com, in order to get more information. And of course, if you want to support the podcast, go over to nishaysnow.com. Just hit that little shop button, and I got all kind of stuff. (laughs) I got digital planners. I got hard cover journals. Got some t-shirts. Stained glass. (laughs) Soon to be stained support the podcast and i do have a free notion template for those of you who want to get organized too i got free stuff over there all right guys thanks again if you have any questions or a topic that you want k and us look k and us blah if you have any questions or a topic that you want like and I to cover, please send an email to hello at nichesnow.com. That's hello at nichesnow.com. And please, in the subject, just write Nishe and Lake. <laughs> and I will know to take a look at it so I can see if that'll be a, a good topic for our next uh, episode, which will be in a few weeks. All right. I hope you guys have an amazing week. And thanks, LaKay, for being my recurring guest this season. So excited. Thank you, Nishay. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye.